All right, everybody. So before I get to the diet, I wanna go over some lifestyle tips that you can start doing into your daily routine because all these tips are gonna help you out when it comes to losing weight, feeling better, and getting healthier. And so um, just to get a little bit off topic right away, your metabolism is the most important thing for your health and like basically all disease from what I've read through holistic medicine, 90% of all diseases are caused by improper metabolism. So if you can't metabolize your food properly, you have undigested food in your digestive tract and those turn into toxins and then those toxins turn into illness. So if you can take care of your metabolism, you will more than likely always be healthy or at least stay healthier than you are and stay prevent illness in the future. So the key to health is proper metabolism. So a lot of these tips I'm gonna read off to you. You have this PDF in your course. So if you want to just read it yourself, you can. Or if you otherwise would rather just listen to me talk, I will tell you everything you need to do. And this is how a daily routine should go in order to lose weight. And this also explains the zone diet and the maintenance diet, which are all diets to help you lose weight. So let's get right down into it. Uh, the very first thing you should do in the morning, a lot of people say is drink a cup of water, but um, I want to double that, if not quadruple that, is because when you drink a glass of water, yes, it helps cleanse your stomach, but first thing in the morning, if you drink two pints of water at a room temperature, it's not only going to cleanse your stomach, but it's also gonna hydrate all your muscles and all of your organs, and it's gonna put your body in a more hydrated state Whereas if you just drink one cup like every hour, that water just goes to your stomach and it just doesn't really disperse everywhere. It just kind of goes right through you. But if you oversaturate your body first thing in the morning on an empty stomach with two pints of water, up to a liter of room temperature water, that'll not only cleanse your stomach, but it'll also hydrate all your organs. So the very first thing you should do, and I do every morning, is I actually have a jug, a gallon jug of water uh, it's a plastic jug and I go fill it up every morning. I have a five gallon jug of water behind in my hallway here. I take the gallon jug that's empty because I drink it every day. I go fill it with water and then that way I have a gallon of water every morning and I know that that gallon of water needs to be gone by the end of the day. So that way I know that I'm drinking at least a gallon of water every single day. So that's just a quick tip on how you can get more water into your diet. It's just get a gallon fill it up and know that's your water supply for the entire day. Um, the next thing that's really helpful, and this is one of the first things that my personal trainer told me to do, was on your first cup of water, first eight ounces of water that you drink in the morning, go ahead and get a lemon and get squeeze of one juice, the juice of one lemon into your water, and then also add one tablespoon of apple cider vinegar and also add a pinch of pepper, cayenne pepper to it and drink that first thing in the morning. And this is gonna help speed up your metabolism. Not to mention the apple cider vinegar is really good for metabolism. It's the most, one of the most acidic um, liquids on the planet. So, and your metabolism is also very highly acidic. So putting apple cider vinegar in your water is gonna help boost your metabolism. So every morning, drink the juice of one lemon, put apple cider vinegar, one tablespoon of it in your water, along with a pinch of cayenne pepper and drink that first thing in the morning. Um, also, when you wanna do your cardio, uh, it's best to do cardio in a fasted state, meaning you haven't eaten anything prior. So it's best to do your cardio right after you drink your water and before you eat breakfast. So if you're lucky enough to live in an apartment or if you have a cardio machine in your house, it's very convenient to have that. Otherwise, if you don't have any gym equipment, you can always go for a brisk walk, but for, do that first thing in the morning on a fasted state. So before you eat anything, and do cardio for 30 to 45 minutes if you can. Um, I stuck to the 30 minutes, the minimum, every day for five days a week, which is also recommended. And that's what my personal trainer did for me, was put me on a routine where every morning for five days out of the week, after I drink my water, I'm gonna go to the cardio machine on the treadmill and I'm gonna do 30 minutes of cardio and I keep my heart rate at 120 to 140 heartbeats per minute. Now, that might be different for you with, if you're younger or if you're older, so you might have to do your own research on that to determine exactly what your rate is, but for me, as a 41-year-old guy, uh, it was 120 to 140 heartbeats per minute, and most treadmills or even gym equipment 
will have a little heart rate machine that you just hold on to and it tells you the heart rate on the screen. Otherwise, you can get your own heart rate monitor and you just wear it as on your wrist and you can get a heart rate monitor from Amazon for like 20 bucks, I'm sure. Okay, so that's just the first thing in the morning. Drink your water, drink the apple cider vinegar water and then go do cardio for 30 minutes, whether it's a brisk walk outside or you go do cardio on a cardio machine. You can also do HIIT cardio if you don't have that much time in the morning. And so HIIT cardio is basically when you do um, cardio as fast as you can. So depending on how your, your physical level, if you're athletic, you can probably, you could do this, but if you're a beginner, don't do not do, not do this because this means HIIT cardio means you're basically sprinting as fast as you can for a good 20 seconds and then 40 second rest. And you need a timer to do this. And you can do that for up to 12 minutes. So 40 minutes off, 20 minutes, 20, 20 seconds on, 40 seconds off, and do that 12 times, so that's 12 minutes, and then do a three minute warm up, so that's only 15 minutes. So if you don't have that much time in the morning, and maybe you're a little more, not so much beginner, um, you look more, more athletic, more advanced, that might be something you wanna do, is just do the HIIT cardio. So it might save you some time, and that's, HIIT cardio is really great to do on a bicycle where there's not that much resistance, you're not pounding machines that much. So um, I found it best to do the bicycle. Um, also a row machine is great, or you can go sprint outside in a parking lot or something like that. So that's only if you're physically able to do that. I typically try to stay away from running outside where I could possibly trip on something or um, other things like that. So I'm always careful with myself, but I like to do hit cardio on the bicycle. Otherwise the treadmill is a, a great go-to and that's what I started off doing. So um, the next thing you want to do is to keep your metabolism steady all day long is you want to eat five meals a day. And so uh, before I hire my personal trainer, when I weighed 210 pounds, I was literally eating only two meals a day. And even though those meals might be chicken, rice, and vegetables, maybe some eggs in the morning with toast, it seems like it's pretty healthy, but the two meals a day, three meals a day was not enough. And one of the very first changes that we did to my routine was adding five meals to my daily routine. So every morning from, from 9 a.m. till about nine at night, I ate a meal every three hours. And so uh, everything was paced out. And so I always made sure to be on time with my meals. So it's good to be in a good rhythm with your diet, with your daily routine. So that way your body kind of gets in a rhythm of getting things done. So you don't want to eat like, you know, all your calories, right before bed type of thing. Like a lot of people like to do intermittent fasting uh, where you basically just fast all day long and then you just eat, you have a time period of eight hours a day where you can just eat all your meals. So that's not what we did. We, st we stayed away from intermittent fasting and we just did, you know, uh, first thing in the morning you have your breakfast and you have basically two lunches and two dinners. So how do you want to look at it? So I'll go into how each meal went in the food plans as far as like how big the chicken was or how much the rice was or the carbs, the fats, etc. So we'll get more into detail in that in just a second. Um, the next thing you want to do, oh yeah, going back to the five meals a day, I wanna get to this. Make sure that every meal that you eat is at least two hours in between. So you don't wanna be eating and then like an hour later you eat. You wanna keep your meals paced out. So it takes two hours to fully metabolize your previous meal. So you don't want to eat a meal while your food is still half digest. So that's just a, a tip when it comes to holistic diets and stuff like that. Um, so, but it takes two hours for your food to metabolize from your very first prior meal. So you wanna make sure you at least wait two hours, but no, go no longer than four hours in between eating meals. So it's just a good way to keep your insulin steady and so is your metabolism. So keep to that time frame of keeping each meal two to four hours apart. Um, the next tip that you want to do is to avoid cold drinks and cold foods. So cold foods and cold drinks actually slow down your metabolism. So uh, when it comes to drinks, you wanna keep ice out of them. And then I don't wanna really talk much about putting ice in soda when you go out to dinner because I've been a waiter before and that's what it seems like everyone does is they drink soda with ice. I don't wanna go into how much unhealthy that would be. It's almost common sense. Now, um, I will show you how later on, if you must have soda, how to work that into your diet. 
It's not the best source of carbs, but it is something you can do if you must. And I'll show you how to do cheat meals later on. Um, but when it comes to the cold food and cold drinks, all cold food and cold drinks will slow down your metabolism. It's always better to eat your food when it's warmed up. Even when I drink milk at night, I warm it up on the stove just so that it's not cold. So um, that's just something you might wanna try. So the next thing you want to do is eat your meals every day at the same time if you can, because you want to keep your body on a rhythm. So it keep, so that way you're like basically like a train, like you just want to keep that momentum going. So you become like basically a fat burning machine all day long. So if you keep your metabolism up, you're burning fat even though you're eating all day long. So there is a rhythm to everything you do. And so like what I would do would, to, would be to keep my meals at 9 a.m., noon, 3, 6 p.m. and 9 p.m. So that's basically how I did everything. So the other thing I want you to do is also focus on eating more, which the diet that I'm gonna talk about, the zone diet and also the maintenance diet requires you probably, probably to eat a little bit more because like I said earlier, when I weighed 180 pounds, even 210 pounds, I was eating two meals a day, maybe three. And so what happens is your body needs protein to rebuild itself. So your body needs protein to build muscle, but not only that, to also rebuild your organs, your tissues, and everything like that. So um, keeping protein high in your diet is necessary because the more muscles you have, the more calories you burn, even at night when you're sleeping. So that's something you might wanna consider. And so uh, when it comes to the zone diet, so here's how the diet works. There's two different diets I wanna give you because one is a low carb option if you're a low carb person, and the other diet is a high carb option if you like carbs as well. So the zone diet is a heart high carb diet, more medium high carb diet. So, um, but here's the thing is like a lot of people already eat carbs, but not enough eat pro, they might not eat enough protein. So the thing about it is with most people nowadays, like they eat, but they don't eat a balanced diet. Like you have to keep everything level. So like you might get enough carbs, but maybe you're not eating enough protein. That's more than likely happening with a lot of people because it's really easy to eat carbs, like potato chips or French fries, pizza, like things like that. Those things are like high in carbs. And it's really easy to, lot, to eat a lot of it, even pasta and rice and things like that. So, but the thing about it is, is like a lot of people might be eating 150 carbs a day, but they're only eating 70 grams of protein. So it's like, if you maybe ate enough protein, you probably stick to the same amount of carbs you're eating all day long. So it's just like, there's a balancing act that everyone must do. And it's all a part about eating a proper balanced diet. So that way your body can function properly. So that way it can burn fat properly. So your body is like a car. You want to keep that maintenance running. So the zone diet is this. So this is the more high carb diet option. So what you want to do in order to discover what your zone diet is, is you want to find out what your maintenance calorie is. So that means whatever amount of calories you eat, you're neither going to gain weight nor lose weight. It's like this is the amount of calories you need every day to stay right where you are. And so in order to lose weight, you want to find that maintenance level of calories, that number, and then you want to subtract it by 500. So that way you have, if your diet requires you to have 2,200 calories every day to stay right where you are, then you would eat 1,700 calories. So that way you're, that way you're every day is 500 less calories as you go along and those calories build up like, or go down as I guess you can say, because one day you ate 500 less calories than you needed to, then tomorrow it's another thousand, then it's 1500 the next day. So it keeps compounding basically as you go on and you keep up the diet. So you're gonna be losing weight gradually and this is the healthy way to do it. So what you wanna do is to discover your maintenance calorie is this, and this is the best way that I know to do it is to just, whatever your ideal body weight is. So like my ideal body weight is 150 pounds. Your ideal body weight might be a, might be 120, it might be 180, but whatever you want to weigh, take that number and multiply it by 15. And whatever that, whatever that number is, that's your maintenance diet for your calories. And then you subtract that by 500. And then that'll be your cut diet. Now out of those calories, 40% of those calories should come from protein 
the other 40% should come from carbs and the other 20% of the calories should come from fats. And so out of a calorie, if you wanna weigh 150 pounds, for instance, so like my maintenance would be 2,200 calories and I would subtract 500 and then now I'm having 1,700 calories to lose weight. Out of those 1,700 calories, 40% is like 700 calories. Another 40% of that is going to be uh, another 700 calories for the carbs and then 20% is for the fats. So you got 40% comes from the protein, 40% comes from carbs, 20% comes from fats. So basically all day long, let me change my page. So to that, every day I would have 175 grams of protein, 175 carbs, and then I'm also gonna have 38 grams of fat all day long. And those are my numbers. And so, um, excuse me, I'm gonna have to press pause for a second so I can recharge my battery. So I'll be right back.